My name is Jenny Nelson and I'm a professor of physics from Imperial College London where I have a group working on the use of materials like this, which I'll talk about in a minute, for solar energy conversion. Right now I'm here in the Devetsha Centre for Climate Change at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. And I've come here for a, a meeting with scientists and engineers here about how new types of solar energy materials like these might be able to contribute to reducing carbon emissions and so um, tackling uh, climate change. These type of materials, we call these plastic semiconductors, sometimes they're called molecular semiconductors. And uh, they're made from carbon, hydrogen, simple elements like that. And what's special about them is that you can design and synthesize a molecule with the properties that you like once you understand how it works. But what's special about the molecular materials is that you can dissolve them make a solution, make them into a liquid ink. And that ink can then be cast, it can be printed onto a large area by some uh, printing process similar to that that's used to make newspapers. And by, by using this process, it means that you can make some um, solar cell structure uh, very quickly and very cheaply. And so, what we're doing here is we're really trying to use the same principles that are used in printing high quality newspapers um, to produce large areas of semiconductor material very quickly and very cheaply. And we're also making use of the know-how in making sort of everyday plastics like this to serve as the substrates for our solar cells and the printed inks will lie on top of that. And that will allow us to have solar cells that are flexible, very light, and very cheap. So, where these, this new technology fits in, well, the, the dominant solar cell photovoltaic technology is based on crystalline silicon. And newer types of technologies, thin film technologies, are based on, both of these are based on what we call flat plate technology. So you have a solid, heavy glass substrate and the semiconductor goes on top of it. And those type of modules are quite um, expensive to produce in terms of the amount of energy that you have to put in. If we can make the solar cells using less energy, then when we use them, it means that we, we start to save on carbon emissions more quickly. Less energy is embedded in the manufacture, so you recover the carbon that you save. You, you make savings in carbon emissions more quickly and therefore more cheaply. That's why we're interested in this. We can look at it in the context of um, what we call an abatement cost curve. So this is a plot of many different type of technologies that you could use and how much each of them is costing to displace one gram of carbon dioxide. Some technologies actually save you money and if you use them, you, you may as well use them straight away because you'll save carbon and save money at the same time. Solar photovoltaics costs money to save carbon and one of the reasons why solar cells aren't used more widely is because they're expensive to implement. But if we can get some of these new technologies based on plastic to work, then we could move our solar photovoltaics more towards the lower cost end of things where it costs less and you save carbon more quickly. When you generate electricity out of light, what you're doing is you absorb packets of light from the sun in a material, and the energy of the light is then given up in order to make a pair of charges, one positive and one negative, separate from each other. And the charges can then travel through the material 
and they get taken into an outside circuit and there they make an electric current. They give us electricity and they can do electrical work. That's what happens in all types of photovoltaic cell. Now what happens in molecular solar cells is a little bit different from what happens in materials like silicon. And the reason that it's different is because of the molecular nature of the materials. So here we have some molecules. This is a, a, a conjugated polymer, and these are two what we call small molecules. Now, if one of these molecules absorbs a photon of light, then the energy of the light is going to be um, captured in a region which is about the size of the molecule or if you have a big, big molecule like a polymer, then the energy of the light will be captured on a segment of the polymer chain. So in quite a small region of space. And we want to turn that energy into electrical energy. So if we think about this from the point of view of electrical charge, in a material, you've absorbed the photon of light and that raises the energy of an electron inside the material. And then you want to take the electron away. And in order to get the electron away from this small region of space inside the molecule, we have to use another molecule, which is different in that it wants the electron even more badly than the first one. So the, 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 the electron will become stabilized if it goes onto the other molecule. It's like water going downhill. It will become stable if the electron moves. And that's done in practice by making a film which contains two different molecules mixed together. Now, what's interesting about that is it's quite similar to what happens in a plant when it's doing photosynthesis. So inside the dye, the green dye that makes up the color in the plant, and there's a species that absorbs the light and an electron is promoted to a higher energy level and then it's attracted away by other types of molecule that want the electron more badly. And so you have what we call a free energy gradient that's pulling the electron away from the place where the light is absorbed. So then we have the charges separated from each other. That's what we need to achieve to get an electric current. When we make an organic solar cell, we then have this thin film of two different types of semiconducting plastic mixed together. One of them absorbs the light and the other one attracts the electrons away from the first material. And uh, we can take you through what happens inside this active layer. So this is the side view cross section. We've got our layer of two plastic semiconductors mixed together, sandwiched between two electrodes, which are different. One of them is very attractive to positive charge, and the other one is more attractive to negative charge. And then we absorb a photon of light. And the photon could be absorbed somewhere in one of the materials. And then that creates a, a sort of a local um, a packet of energy. We call it an exciton. And that exciton is able to move through the material. But if it reaches a place where the other type of molecule is present, then it's going to break up like it does in photosynthesis. So you go from having a packet of energy to having a positive and a negative charge. They, um, the, the exciton separates, the light energy separates into separate charges. Those charges then if they can get away from each other, they will then be free and they will travel through the material to the electrodes and then they get collected and they go into an external circuit and they give us electric current. And for this to happen efficiently, we want materials that can absorb the visible light in the solar spectrum very well. We want combinations of materials that can break up the charge at the interface, and we want 
semiconductors which can transport the charge very efficiently and quickly to the external circuit. Well, the things that, that we don't understand very well and that my research group and other groups are studying and trying to understand better are really two things. One is the process of charge separation. So when you have broken up the, the light energy to make positive and negative charges at the interface, we want to understand how you can get those charges away from each other without having to pay for it with some of the energy that you harvested from the sun. That's one big challenge that needs to be understood. And the other is how we can make this process of charge transport through the material as fast and as efficient as possible. And that is another, um, another important goal of research into these materials. So although these type of solar cells made from plastic semiconductors are very interesting because of the, 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 the flexibility that we have to make new materials and the possibility of converting uh, solar energy into electricity very cheaply, they don't perform as well as solar cells made from materials like silicon, not yet. However, during the period of time that, um, that um, our group and also other groups in the world have been researching these materials, the efficiency has increased really quite dramatically. So about um, 10 or 12 years ago, the efficiency stood at about 2%, and that's very small compared to silicon with the best efficiency of 25%. But over the intervening decade, the efficiency has risen by a number of breakthroughs mainly in discovery of new materials, but more recently in better understanding of how things work, and have raised the efficiency from around about 2% to over 10% that's been reported over the last year. And um, those of us working on these materials were quite confident that this efficiency can be pushed further up to, say, 15%, um, by better understanding of the way the device works and by the development of new material.